Let's talk about authentication. I don't know about you, but I get a sense of dread whenever I have to create or maintain an authentication system. It's an extremely important part of many applications. It prevents bad actors, scams, and lets users manage and manipulate their data. But the developer experience is still a nightmare. Something so simple in concept, verifying that the user is whom they say they are, has turned into a convoluted mess of vulnerabilities, dependencies, and buggy edge cases. I don't like the state of authentication, but the web is an inherently untrustworthy place, so there is no perfect answer. I believe that most dependencies are unnecessary and that we should instead focus on building simple systems that suit our actual needs. You don't need third-party tools like Superbase, Firebase, and Auth0. We can roll our own secure, scalable authentication system with the same amount of effort that it would take to set one of these up. Although external dependencies solve some of the headaches that come with authentication, in my opinion, they don't actually address the biggest frustrations or the actual important ones. In this video, we're going to implement three types of authentication with minimal dependencies, starting with simple password authentication, then implementing social sign-in with OAuth, and then using device authentication with passkeys. We're going to show how easy it is to configure each of these and how we can use them securely. But we're also going to show their weaknesses and explain why none of these are the perfect solution for authentication. They all come with their own frustrations. I'm also going to show my preferred way of authentication, which is done by using passkeys with a password manager. Authentication, not to be confused with authorization, is a process by which we verify the user is who they say they are. This is an inherently difficult problem. The internet is an open protocol and it is a trustless environment. And we should remember that this lack of trust goes in both directions. Users should be as wary of your website misusing their data as you are wary of bad actors trying to access your database. There are three ways that someone can prove they are who they say they are. They can know something, like a password, have something, like a key or key card, or be something, like a fingerprint or facial scan. I often advocate for removing dependencies and using basic, simple, boring tools to achieve the results that actually suit your needs without premature optimization. And password authentication ticks a lot of those boxes. Password authentication is very simple to understand. If a user knows the password that is associated with a particular account, we can assume that they are the person who created that account. Storing a password in plain text is a huge security risk and you should never do it. Database leaks and internal bad actors happen all the time and users shouldn't ever risk having their data credentials leaked by your website. I created this little sandbox authentication page. It's a normal registration form with three changes. It doesn't store any data. It doesn't redirect you anywhere and it logs events that happen on the client and on the server to give you an idea of what is happening when you perform certain actions. Client events are in green and server events are in blue because I have commas seizure but only for tech diagrams and errors are always in red. The best way to prevent storing a password in plain text is to hash it. A hashing function is a function that is deterministic, meaning it always produces the same output and relatively cheap to perform but very expensive to reverse. The same password hashed with the same algorithm always gives the same hash, even for different users and different services. So as an added layer of security, we also add a random string to each user's password. This is called a salt, and it is randomly generated for each user. I made a little debug window to show the detailed view of what happens when salting and hashing. This is just a demonstration, and the actual salt will be generated by the server. When I submit a request, you can see the events show that we received the password over HTTPS, salt the password, hash the result, and then store the hashed password and the salt with the user ID. I coded this up in Kotlin since it's what I'm most familiar with, but these concepts can be applied to any language. I start by generating a new salt. I'm using a random UUID and then concatenate the password with the salt and pass it through a hashing function. I'm using SHA-256 here. If everything goes well, I generate a new user ID and save the user ID, username, hashed password, and salt. When signing in, I start by fetching the user by the username provided. I use the stored salt to salt the password provided and check the hashed provided password with the one that I have saved. 
If they match, I will create a new session token, which is saved via the HTTP set cookie header in the API layer. Looking back at the demo, we can see these events when I sign in successfully. And if I provide an invalid password, it will find the user, but the hash passwords will not match. And if I provide an incorrect username, it will not find the user at all. This seems like a very appropriate solution given our requirements. There is just one problem, and it's that protecting users from malicious actors is an order of magnitude easier than protecting them from themselves. It's only a matter of time before a user forgets or leaks their password. And now you have to deal with emails and implement a password reset. My default solution in situations like this is usually to tell the user that this is just the way it is, but I don't think that's appropriate here. This is a really common occurrence and creating a new account isn't a valid option for a lot of products. Dooming yourself to an endless sea of support tickets doesn't seem very pragmatic. We can change the username field to be email and add a password reset link. When pressed, this link will redirect us to a new page where we can input our email. Submitting sends an email to the user with a one-time code embedded in a link. The server saves this one-time code with the user's email. When the user follows the link, they're allowed to update their password. This will do the same process we initially did when registering them, by salting and hashing the provided password. This adds a little complexity to our server. We now need an SMTP client so that we can send emails, but sending basic emails is very easy to do. I just embed my one-time code directly in the link in the email body. When setting the new password, I read the user's data to grab their salt and use it to salt the new password and replace the previous data. Now we are essentially using access to the email as an authentication method. Anyone who can access the email can access this account. So why should I make them remember an extra password? If I'm going to rely on another service for authentication anyway, I'd rather it be more secure and easier to use. A better method is to implement OAuth2 so that they can sign in with their email or other account directly. OAuth2 is an open mechanism by which you can authenticate someone using a third party. Most commonly, this is done by signing in with Google, Facebook, or Apple, but it can be done with anyone who supports it. We're going to be using GitHub. This approach makes a lot of sense. Most people spend most of their time in one of the three platforms mentioned. So why not leverage their existing accounts and make their life simpler and more secure? After signing in, we are redirected to the third party service. We sign in and approve whether the permissions has been requested by the app. In this case, it is just access to your email. The third party service will then create a one-time code, which is relayed back to our original app. Our server then exchanges this one-time code for an authenticated token using a secret shared between the third party service and us. We can now use this token to fetch details directly from this other service about the user in question and verify that they are who they say they are. After this, we can create a session. Before we can use this, we have to set up an application with GitHub. They provide us with a client secret, which is private, and a client ID, which is public. And we provide them with an origin, which is the website where the request is expected to be coming from, and a redirect URL, which is the endpoint they will send the one-time code to. This implementation has a little bit of added complexity, since we now need a client to communicate with the external service but it's still very straightforward. The sign in button is just a link to GitHub with an unguessable state value, which prevents man in the middle attacks. The server just reads the code and the state provided, makes sure that the state matches, and then we make a request to GitHub for the access token. Finally, we can access the user's details. We create a session and return that to the user the same way we did for password login. There are some services like Superbase and Firebase which essentially do this for you. But OAuth is so simple and consistent that the time integrating with these services could be spent implementing OAuth directly. Superbase and Firebase don't solve the actual problem with OAuth, which is that Google, Facebook, and Apple are a nightmare to work with. Do you remember when I said that we should just use OAuth instead of email because it's the same thing but more secure? There is one difference, and that difference is that email is open. You don't need anyone's permission or approval to send an email. Google needs your full privacy policy and terms of service before you can even submit your app, after which it will be reviewed by Google, a process which can take days. They can also revoke your access at any time. Facebook has a similar process, 
but they also require HTTPS on the client. So now you can't run your app locally without jumping through hoops or Cloudflare tunnels. And this is a true story, but I've also been part of incidents where Facebook would send unclear requirements with a short deadline, not respond to any support tickets, and then just shut down our authentication. This was not a small company either. This was a multi-billion dollar company. And the only way we were able to turn Facebook login back on and let our users into the website was with our CTO on the phone threatening to turn off millions of dollars in Facebook ad revenue. I will never be integrating with Facebook. And this is my problem with services like Superbase and Firebase. Integrating directly with OAuth or even implementing email recovery is not that much work, not considerably more than integrating with Firebase and Superbase. But using these providers adds another layer of communication and another dependency that can fail or turn you off, which makes this all the more confusing to maintain. I've received deprecation notices from Auth0 that were actually forwards from Google, and it was not immediately clear who I was talking to. To be fair, I can't speak for Apple since I've never used them, but GitHub has been an absolute pleasure. It's what I expected the others to be, and if all providers were as pleasant as GitHub, I would have a much easier time praising OAuth. The problem is that you are now at the mercy of these other companies, and they can choose to prevent a large part of your user base from signing in at will. That never feels good. The final option is to rely on the user's device or password manager directly to authenticate them. Passkeys, or web authentication, is an open mechanism that uses a public key private key pair to authenticate the user. A public key private key pair is kind of similar to the hashing algorithm we used for passwords, where we have a one-way function that encrypts data, but it's hard to reverse. The difference is that when something is signed with a private key, the corresponding public key can be used to verify that signature. When we register with passkeys, the device or password manager prompts the user to create a new private key public key pair. The private key is kept by the user and never shared. The public key is sent to the server and saved with the account. When the user wants to sign in, they sign some data using their private key and the server can use the public key to verify that the user is who they say they are. Once again, this implementation is a little more complex, both on the client and on the server. The client side now requires some JavaScript to create a new key pair on the device and then send the required data to the server for registration. The client also sends a challenge to prevent replay attacks. In some ways, this is similar to the state in OAuth. The server verifies the challenge and passes the public key and the algorithm and creates a new user with the data. When signing into the client, we will use the private key to sign some data, which will be sent to the server once again with the challenge. The server will verify the data using the stored public key. Passkeys is mostly known as device level authentication, since that is one of its greatest strengths and differentiating factors, but it can also be its biggest weakness. If your device contains all your private keys, what do you do when it breaks or is lost or stolen? What do you do when you need to sign in using someone else's computer to make a quick change? These are all valid concerns, but I think that there is a better way to use passkeys, which is done by using them with a the password manager. Using a password manager lets you avoid the headaches of passwords being locked to a device while still getting all the benefits of passkeys. You could also use a physical key to get the same result. This is essentially like doing password authentication, except without the added risk of a password. Your app isn't even storing any private data and there is no need for password resets. This is the way authentication should be done, in my opinion. This is the pragmatic, straightforward, zero dependency approach. But the world is not quite ready yet. Almost everyone is already using a password manager directly through their browser, whether they know it or not. But not everyone is comfortable using password managers yet. And out of those who are, not everyone understands and trusts passkeys. When sign-in pages first started popping up, the only way to sign in was by creating a password. Now that social login has gotten more popular, we have hybrid sign-in pages where social authentication is clearly preferred, but you still have the option to sign in with email if you want to. Each of these have their own strengths and weaknesses. If there is a natural OAuth provider associated with your product, implementing OAuth makes a lot of sense for both you and your users. Passkeys are very secure but they are not widely used by users, so they would suit a high-risk, privacy-focused product or be an excellent form of multi-factor authentication. 
and using a password will essentially always be required as a fallback. You can always mix some or all of these, but having gone through this journey, I think that using password authentication is the most boring solution we covered and the easiest one to get started with, making it the clearest recommendation. But as we've discovered, all of these come with their own frustrations. Thank you for watching. The demo page I kept referencing in this video will be available at the first link in the description. Please don't put your actual password in there since it shares some server data and is inherently less secure. OAuth and passkeys are fine though and you can use your actual account for those. I'm not sure how long I'll leave it up for. It'll be free but there'll be a little donate button if you're feeling generous and interested in learning projects like this. I hope this was somewhat entertaining and somewhat educational. I really appreciate everyone watching. It's been so special to see the interest in these videos. Okay, goodbye.